Hey everybody, and thanks for tuning in to our video, which is titled Volume of Solids of Revolution by the Washer Method. So up until now, we've been working on volume by discs, and today we're gonna introduce a new kind of cross-section called a washer. Now, this picture right here is what a washer looks like. It's really a disc with a hole in the middle. So this represent, this inner circle here represents a hole. And so what we're gonna be working on before we even start the lesson is finding the area of a washer by geometry and then talking about how we turn that into volume if we add a little bit of thickness to our washer, almost like, a, think about the, a, like a quarter that had a hole cut out of the center. So the first off, let me just say the most famous that I can think of washer cross section that we would use every day, get ready for it, would be toilet paper. Think of a roll of toilet paper. So here it is. So if you were to, even if you cut and hack off, you know, if you would cut the toilet paper right here and look down, you're still going to see a cross section that is a washer. So this is like a perfect example of something that would look like that. But let's focus on the area. So to find the area of a washer, all we're going to do is take the area of the entire circle, which I know is pi r squared. Now, I'm going to actually call that pi times capital R squared. Reason being, if I measure from the center of the washer out to the edge, that is actually the bigger of two radii that we're going to discuss. So I'm going to call the area of this whole circle pi times capital R squared. But I don't want all that. I've got to take away, hence this subtraction sign, the area of the inner circle. So I need to remove this so that I'm just left with this ring here that's left over. So I'm going to subtract another circle at area pi r squared. And that radius right here to the inner circle, I'm going to call lowercase r. So if I take pi capital R squared minus pi lowercase r squared, I'm going to have the area of the washer that remains. Now I want to change that into volume. Simple. I give this a little bit of thickness here, like a cylinder. And all I have to do is call that thickness the height. And when I turn this into volume, I'm just going to have pi capital R squared minus pi lowercase r squared, all times the height. And we know when we lay this on the x or y axis, the h will turn into either a dx or a dy. Um, and another thing we're going to be doing in this lesson is once we get to this point in our definite integrals, we oftentimes are going to take the pi out. Pi, capital R squared, minus little r squared, and then h. Okay? So that's a little bit on the washer. Now, if you take a look at your... Why do I, I keep trying to put this cap on this pen, it's not, it's not working, okay. Uh, anyhow, on to the note. So you have this note sheet here, and we're gonna take a look at example one. Let me pull this down here. Example one says, find the volume of the solid formed when the region bounded by, here we go, let me grab a highlighter. The region bounded by y equals square root of x, y equals 1 tenth x, and x equals four, so those three items, is revolved around the x-axis. Okay, now I already have a graph here and let me show you where I pulled this graph from. So what I did over here for you is I took a piece of graph paper where I had more space. We know what y equals square root of x looks like. That's just this top function right here and I've plotted some points. Y equals 1 tenth X is just a linear function whose Y intercept is at the origin and then has a slope of up one, right 10. So that's this guy right here. And X equals four is just the vertical line at X equals four. So the area that's bounded between all three 
is right here. So what I did is I just sort of pulled this over to my graph. So if you want to pause the video and kind of duplicate that, you can do that now. Okay, so now we're going to revolve this region around the x-axis. So let me sort of reflect this. I'm trying to get an idea of what this is going to look like in 3D. So um, four, I'm at negative two here. So this part's just going to kind of wind around to here and come up. And then my linear coming across like this. More or less. It's not the greatest picture, but that's pretty good. Okay, so we're spinning this around the x-axis to form a three-dimensional object. Now, here's the deal. Whenever you have gap, and I, when I say gap, I'm talking about this part right here. See how there's gap between the axis that you're spinning around and the space that you originally bounded. So if you look at this space right here, there is a gap between that shading and the axis you're spinning around. When that happens, you know your cross section cut perpendicular to the x-axis is going to be a washer. So let me draw the washer in here. One washer, one washer cross section would look like this. If I draw it here, here's my outer ring. And then here is my inner ring. Okay, outer ring here, inner ring here where the gap is. I could draw a smaller one. Here's a smaller washer, outer ring, teeny tiny little inner ring. And the idea is if I give this a little bit of thickness here, which I'll kind of exaggerate for the camera here, little bit of thickness, which I'm gonna call dx, since that is going to run parallel to the thickness on this cross section is going to run parallel to the x-axis, then if I just add up all these volumes through the space, which there's where the definite integral comes in, then I'm going to have my total volume. So let's go ahead and set that up. So our volume is going to equal the definite integral. Now, we know when we spin around the x-axis, everything will be with respect to x. So let's start with the x bounds. We are bounded from zero to four. And now I'm going to go back right here to my volume of a washer. And my h, remember, is in this case gonna be my dx. Now look the pi, the pi's out to the front. So let me pull the pi to the front. And then I just need my big R squared minus my little r squared and my dx, which is my height. Okay, so how do you get the big radius and the lowercase radius? Well, let's look at our picture. Kind of got to go back to the picture here. So the outer radius, so from the center of the washer, which is the x-axis, look right here, measured out to the outer rim here is modeled and defined by the function root x. So to get that distance, I have to take root x minus zero, and I'll have that full distance there. So that's what I'm gonna put into the first parentheses, root x minus zero. Now the inner radius, the little radius of the small circle is measured from the center, which is the x-axis, to this part right here, the inner function, which I'll highlight in a different color, let's say blue. Grab my blue highlighter, so we're talking about this one. So from the x-axis to the blue is the 1 tenth x minus 0 squared, and that is all she wrote. That's going to do it. So if I take my TI-84 and I put in, um, I'm going to do pi first, pi on the outside, and then math 9, 0 to 4, parentheses, square root x minus 0, quantity squared, take away the inside, 1 tenth 
x minus 0 quantity squared and a dx on the end. I'm going to get my final answer, 24.463. Twenty-four point four six three units cubed. Final answer. Okay, and that's really all there is to it. All of our work with disks have really helped set up this lesson. Now, what I did down here, believe it or not, all four of these formulas represent the same thing, the same idea. It says the formula to find the volume of a solid whose cross sections are washers when rotating around the x-axis is. Okay, there's a couple different ways to think about it. Notice the first part of this. They all have a pi in the front. That's standard. They all have you integrating from one x to another x. And they all have a dx on the back. So that's all the same. The different wording here just depends on how you want to look at it or what makes sense to you. So one way to look at it is that the big R, so think about the big R versus the little r, is the top minus the bottom. So if you go back here, if you think of the green as being top and the blue as being bottom, then that's essentially what we did, top minus bottom, and that actually goes back to our area lessons. You could also think of big R minus little r as being the outer function minus the inner function sort of like outer, inner. You could also think of big R as being the function that's farthest from the x-axis minus the function closest to the x-axis. And then the last way I represented it, just to kind of show you must be in terms of x here, in terms of x, like we were here in terms of x, you could call it f of x squared minus g of x squared. But again, all of these representative of capital R and little r on your washer. Okay, so our last example for this video is on the back. And of course, here, I just want to take you around the y-axis. So how does the y-axis revolution change things? Well, not much. It just means we're going to have to get everything, including our bounds, in terms of y. So let's start by reading the problem. It says... Find the volume of the solid formed when the region bounded by, here we go, y equals 4x, and I'll make blue, y equals 4x squared, is revolved around the y-axis. Okay, show that right there. So let's start graphing. Well, y equals 4x is a linear function whose y-intercept is at the origin with a slope of 4, so I'm going to go up four and write one. So I just kind of have this. I'm already looking ahead at my blue here. Four uh, X squared is just going to be a skinny little quadratic function whose vertex is at the origin. And if you look here, when X is one, my Y value is also four. So this quadratic is going to kind of do this. So it's going to be a really skinny, like it almost looks like um, a petal on a flower, a little bit, or not a petal, you know what I mean, leaves, like the leaves on a flower stem. Okay, so there you have that. So let's spin that around the y-axis. So if we can mimic this on the other side here, it's going to kind of come down here, and then it's going to bend here. And so you totally see this gap between the y-axis and what we're spinning to begin with. So we definitely, most certainly have a cross-section that's a washer. So let me draw a couple of these cross-sections. So one cross-section, if I draw it here, would look like this. So I would draw my big circle minus my little one right here. If I did a larger one up at the top, big, and then little, and I could do a smaller one down here, big and little. It's kind of hard to draw them when you're dealing with such a small space here, but that's the idea. 
And so here is my setup. So I'm gonna start with volume equals. Let's get that pi to the front, definite integral. Now my boundaries have to be y values. So not zero to one, don't go that route, go zero through four. I need a big R squared minus a little r squared dy, because look at the thickness on these guys, the thickness. I didn't really draw thickness, but this is my thickness. That is a dy, a change in y. Okay, so my outer radius, my big radius, I've got to measure to the blue. So think of the big R starting at its center on the y-axis, and you gotta go out, 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 all the way to your blue function, which was my quadratic. Now, that distance, that radius, that big R, is an x value. This is x equals, it's going or parallel to the x-axis, so I need to take this guy, I need to take y equals 4x squared, and I need to solve it for x equals. So I'm gonna divide both sides by four, and then square root. And since this x is a positive, I'm not gonna worry about plus or minus. I'm just gonna do the positive square root of y over four, because I'm going to the right, which are positive x values. So if I take this right-hand function minus the left, which takes me all the way back to the middle here at the y-axis, then in this first parentheses, I'm gonna have square root of y over four minus zero. Okay, now to the inner function, the little r. This is my linear inside function here. And so that distance measured from the y-axis to the right is also an x value. And if I take y equals four x, sorry, that's hard to see y equals 4x, and I solve it for x, I simply get y divided by 4. So from the green back to the y-axis, which is 0, it's just going to be y over 4 minus 0. And that should do it. So my final answer, appealing over here to my ti, is going to be, now remember, as long as I'm set up correctly here with y's, I can put x's into my ti. So I'm gonna start with a pi on the outside, math nine, zero to four, parentheses. Uh, square root, alpha y equals, get my fraction, x over four, minus zero, quantity squared, minus parentheses, x over four, minus zero, squared, dx, even though I know it's a dy and I'm getting 2.094. Okay, 2.094 units cubed. Final answer. Okay, so just like I did on the front side, let's finish this off. Oh no, I just realized I have a typo. Bummer. Okay, well, gonna change that as soon as this video is over. Okay, so you see, hopefully you see it too. So you see all the pies are the same. These, see I copied and pasted. These bounds are supposed to be y values, not x values. This is embarrassing. So please make all of these y1 to y2. Hopefully by the time you get this worksheet, I've changed it. This is y, 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 this is y. And all these dx's, dy, 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 and dy. That's what you get for cutting and pasting, Callahan. Now, guess what, though? This part's right. I thought to change this part. So now, your big R and your little r. Okay, so the big R and the little r. The big R, you can think of as being the function on the right. So if you look at your region here, the blue function was the right, and that was our big R, and the green was the left, little r, so right minus left. You could also think of this as outer minus inner. So from the y-axis, go to the outer minus the inner. If you don't like that, you can think of it as 
function farthest from the y-axis minus the function closest. So if you look again, farthest, closest. And last but not least, just to remind you that these must be in terms of y, like these in terms of y, f of y squared minus g of y squared, that's also big R minus little r. Okay, so forgive my typo. That finishes the notes on washers. Thanks for watching.